Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to select objects and manipulate them using jQuery. So, let's get started. Alright, so here in Dreamweaver we have our basic jQuery setup. In my last jQuery video I showed you guys how to link to the jQuery library and how to set up this script.js file to hold all of your external jQuery content. So I recommend going and checking that video out so that you can get this setup happening in your document. So what we're going to be doing today is actually selecting some HTML objects and manipulating them using jQuery. So to get started, we're going to take and go into our body and create a new HTML object, and this is going to be an unordered list. So I'm just going to make an opening UL tag, and we'll hit enter, make a closing UL tag, and then inside of here, we're going to take and make some LI tags. So once we have one of these, I'm just going to copy and paste this down so that we have three, and then we'll give each of these a little bit of content. So I'll say first in the first one, second in the second one, and third in the third one. So now we can take and preview that in Chrome so that we can get an idea of what we have here. So again, just an unordered list. And what we're going to start out by doing just so we can get some concepts down is basically how we can take and click on these with jQuery. So how we can select them and then make something happen. So maybe we click on them and an alert happens. So we'll go back over to Dreamweaver in order to get started with that. So we'll go over to our script file. Now, if you remember from my previous video, we have a document ready, which holds everything that we want to happen. So anything that we write is going to occur within this document ready. Now we also have an alert here which I've commented out in the code. I've used two slashes in order to comment it out which basically renders that code useless. It doesn't do anything so you can leave comments for yourself or you can basically stop code from actually occurring. So in order to get started here we're going to be working with something that we're already familiar with so I'm just going to use the document first. So I'll say dollar sign, open close parentheses and document. So now we want something to happen when we click on the document. So we'll say dot click, open close parentheses, and then inside of these parentheses we'll say function, open close parentheses, open curly bracket, and then hit enter twice and close curly bracket. Now at the very end of line six here, at the very end of this line, I'm just going to hit a semicolon. So if you're getting an error, you'll probably see a little red mark. Now make sure that your syntax is correct, otherwise from here on out it won't work. So what do we want to happen when we click this is basically what we're saying here. So we have a document. So when we click on the document, then we're going to have something happen. So what happens is going to go inside of this nest here. So these are called arguments. And what we want our argument to be on this one is just simply an alert saying, hey, you've reached this, you've clicked something. So we're going to copy this alert here that I have. Now, I'm not going to be copying the comment because we actually want this to run. So I'm going to click save. So now whenever we click this, it should alert hello. So anywhere in the document. So we'll come back over to Google Chrome and we'll just click in the document and we see hello. So no matter where I click in here, we're going to get that same alert. So let's get a little bit more specific and say whenever we click on these li tags, it's going to create that alert. So I'm just going to come over back to Dreamweaver and in order to select an HTML object you're going to put it in quotes so we're going to delete out document and we'll put two quotes now this is happens for any HTML uh, object so if it's a div or if it's an a tag or if it's an li it always goes in quotes so we'll say li within those quotes and we'll save and go back over to Chrome and so now when we click in the document nothing happens and when we click on the li's now we've gotten more specific and that's when our alert actually fires so now in order to get even more specific so that we can start differentiating between those LIs, we can go back over to our HTML and what we need to do is give our LI tags an ID and a class. So I'm just going to give them an ID starting with the first one. So ID equals two quotes and then inside of the quotes we'll just say something like first underscore LI. Just something very descriptive. Not very fun but pretty descriptive so we'll just paste that into these other li tags and then change the name so this one is second underscore li, third underscore li. So then we can also take and give each of these a class. So I'm going to explain why we're giving them a class and an id here in just a second. So we'll give them a class on the first one we'll just call this list underscore li and this is going to be the exact same thing or we can call this actually list underscore item. So we'll take and copy that and paste that on each of them. Now, the class you'll notice is the exact same on all of these. That's because all of these we want to have something in common. So if we wanted to select all of these LIs, we could either select just the LI, but that would select 
every LI in the document. So if we had more LIs down here, then it would select all of them. So we want to just specify these specific LIs. So these are all the same in the way that they're LIs and they have a class of list items. So we can use that list item class in order to select them all. Now if we wanted to select just the first one, then we could use first LI because it's different. So you'll see that it has a different ID, but it has a same class. So we have a way to select them all at one time. And we also have a way to select them individually. So once we know that, we can take and go over to our jQuery. And let's say that we wanted to select just that first one. So in order to select something an ID or a class, it looks very similar to how it does in CSS. So if you want to select an ID, you're going to put a pound sign. And if you want to select a class, you're going to put a period. So since we're selecting an ID, we're going to put a pound sign. You'll see it brings up all of the ones that we have here, but we can say first underscore LI. So now whenever we click on the first LI in the list, it's going to alert hello. And it's not going to do that for any of the rest of those. So if we take and go after we've saved over to Chrome, refresh, now if we click on say the third one or we click on the document, nothing is happening. Now if we click on the first one, we get our alert of hello. So now let's get a little bit more specific and help the jQuery to actually figure out which one of these we're clicking on because right now we can take and go back to here and we can maybe say get that class of all of those. So we'll put in the class of list item. And now if we go back, we're basically back to where we were we're seeing it for every one of those. So it's saying hello for each one. So we don't really have anything different happening depending on which one we click on. So let's actually take and help it figure out which one we're clicking on. So in order to do that, we're going to go back over here and we're going to be learning about a useful thing called this. Now, this helps you to determine which specific item you're clicking on. So in this case, we want to say this dot ID. So what we're actually looking for is finding the ID that we're clicking on of the object. So if that doesn't make any sense, what I'm going to do is take and cut this and we're going to put it inside of our alert. I just wanted to keep it separate there so you could see it outside of all of this other code. So again, this does not go inside of the quotes. This just goes inside of the parentheses of the alert. So I'm just going to save that and then we'll run it and you can see what happens and then I'll explain it a little bit further because it'll be easier once you see it. So we'll take and run that inside of Chrome. Now if we click on first, you should see first li is actually coming up. Now if we click on second, you'll see second li comes up. Click on third, it says third li comes up. So now instead of having it just say hello or having it say, hey, you've clicked on one of these broader subjects, it knows exactly which one you've clicked on. So it is saying this, this is the one that we clicked on. We're clicking on the first one and then it comes up with first.li. So now we know exactly which one we've clicked on and we can do stuff specifically to that specific item rather than all of them at one time. So this is a way of figuring out which one you are manipulating at the time. So second is currently this because I'm clicking on it. Third is currently this because I'm clicking on that one at that time. So it's a little bit of a tricky concept, but once you figure it out, it's basically the one that you are currently working with. So that becomes um, a very helpful actual uh, thing to learn within jQuery in order to create further applications later on with jQuery. So I think we're probably done here today with this stuff. This gives you enough to play around with. You've learned how to actually select items. You've learned kind of a function of click. You've learned the concept of this. So in future uh, videos, I'm going to actually be taking and going a little bit further in jQuery, but I just wanted to get some of these basics out of the way before we actually take and start building more complicated applications using jQuery. So hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. I do have a new video coming out every week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.